search and exploration team finds something fit for the X-Files during an expedition in the Baltic Sea. The team captured this sonar image of a circular object about 300 feet down on the sea floor. Trace Gallagher live from our West Coast newsroom with details on what some are saying looks like an underwater UFO. Trace? It really does. You know, and this company, by the way, doesn't really specialize in looking for UFOs, Shannon. They look for buried treasure and artifacts and stuff. They recently found some very rare champagne at the bottom of the sea. And they came across this, and this is a sonar image, as you said, 300 feet down. And not just any UFO, by the way. This thing looks like the Millennium Falcon, right? Han Solo's Millennium Falcon from Star Wars fame. I mean, that's what the Millennium Falcon really looks like, at least when I say real. It's George Lucas's imaginary Millennium Falcon. Now, look at them side by side. If you had a top view of this, they would look almost identical. The thing on your left, it looks like it almost went off a runway, right? Skid marks kind of going off to the left on the runway. Well, it's actually 180 feet wide. That's the wingspan of a 747. It's kind of hard to tell. But if you look at them side by side, especially top down, they would look very similar. Now, the truth is, this could be a sunken vessel, could be an archaeological site, could be a million things, but not nearly as much fun as thinking it's Han Solo's spaceship down there. And Is that Chewbacca on the left? I mean, look, if you, if you kind of... Sort of furry. Can't see it right there. <laughs> It's, right. it's a theory anyway, right? It's a theory. may not be a good one, but look, it's interesting. And they're going to check this out further. They said no, they were going to go off, but now they're going to actually take a closer picture of this. When we get it, when we verify mm -hmm. this thing is legit, we'll show it to you. Buckle up, Star Wars nerds. You're going to like this one. Underwater explorers in Sweden have discovered an unidentified object at the bottom of the Baltic Sea that some say bears an eerie resemblance to the Millennium Falcon. Yeah, that Millennium Falcon. So is it really an intergalactic spacecraft? According to Fox News, Swedish researcher Peter Lindbergh has no idea. Lindbergh explained to local media that his crew discovered on the 300-foot deep ocean floor between Finland and Sweden a large circle about 60 feet in diameter. You can see a lot of weird stuff in this job, but during my 18 years as a professional, I have never seen anything like this. The shape is completely round. And this preternatural puzzler doesn't end there. According to MSNBC, whatever this object is, it may have been moving. Lindbergh said he saw evidence of scars or marks disturbing the environment nearby, suggesting that object somehow moved across the ocean floor to where his team found it. But is this underwater find really a watery grave for little green men? Some aren't so sure. While the shape may remind you of the Millennium Falcon, a Cylon Raider, or a bloody Nazi spaceship from the dark side of the moon, this could be anything, including a geological formation or, as Lindbergh says, some archaeological find, some new Stonehenge. And Discovery News offers another very earthly explanation. The unidentified sunken object is neither an extraterrestrial craft nor a natural feature, but instead a rotating gun turret from a World War II-era battleship. It's possible that an explosion on the ship's deck could have blown it out of the deck ring where it was anchored and slid onto the ocean's depths. So are researchers ever going to unlock the mystery of this underwater object? CNET reports. Originally, Ocean Explorer wasn't planning to check into the object any further due to the expense of underwater exploration. With so much excitement and donations coming in, the team is planning to revisit the area. I'm Jim Flink for Newsy. Multiple sources, the real story. When two Swedish treasure hunters went out in June this year searching for ancient bottles of champagne in shipwrecks in the Baltic Sea, they found more than they bargained for. Dennis Åsberg and Peter Lindberg didn't find any champagne. They found something else. I magnified it, looked at it and realized that it's very unusual. In my years as a treasure hunter, I have many hours in front of the sonar. I have never seen anything like it. A huge disc-shaped object showed up in their sonar pictures, 197 feet in diameter, as big as a jumbo jet. On the sonar it looked like a point of impact, as though something had hit the ocean floor, continuing 4,000 feet, creating a track before it came to a halt. It had dug into the seabed, making a sandbar on its right side. The object is about 275 feet deep, the Baltic seafloor is dead with no underwater currents to create such sandbars. Recently, another object was found about 400 feet from the mysterious disk. 
According to Peter, this object comes from the same direction as the disk and could be a part of it. Sonar shows the objects are made of hard material. It could be something like hard concrete, hard granite or of some kind of metals. The two explorers have been in contact with experts around the world and no one can say what it is. But many speculate on things like a Russian ship from the world wars, a meteorite or a UFO. We live in a universe that is gigantically big. It's not impossible that it is so. Well, then we have found it. That's cool. But as I said, I believe more that it would be something that is dumb, perhaps a submarine base that the Russians had or something like that. For those who can afford it, there will soon be a chance to follow the Ocean Explorer team in a submarine on their first trip down to the Hidden Mystery in May 2012. Entered in News, Stockholm, Sweden. This is IB Times TV, Thursday, August 4th. I'm K. Cameron Lau. A team of Swedish sea treasure hunters have discovered an oddity at the bottom of the ocean that could possibly have interstellar origins. On June 19th, the Ocean Explorer crew commanded by Peter Lindbergh came across a 60-foot wide disk lying in the mud 285 feet below the surface of the Gulf of Bothnia, situated somewhere between Finland and Sweden in the Baltic Sea. Coupled with the round object bearing an uncanny resemblance to a crashed UFO is an impact track leading into it that stretches 985 feet in length. According to Lindbergh, the object is perfectly round and the likes of which he has never seen in his 18 years of professional experience. While being the furthest thing from a team of fanatical UFO hunters, the Ocean Explorer is a company that seeks out sunken ships for the purpose of retrieving their contents for profit. In 1997, they discovered the Jörn Scherping, a Swedish two-masted schooner carrying 2,500 bottles of prime champagne dedicated to the Russian Imperial Fleet. They were able to sell them for $13,000 a bottle. As for what the object is, speculation abounds, though Mr. Lindbergh never actually suggested the possibility of a spaceship wreck. Rumors began to circulate after the sonar image was made public. At the moment, the Ocean Explorer team does not have the interest or the funds to really explore the matter any further, so at least for now, the mystery of the round disk at the bottom of the ocean will have to remain just that, a mystery. K. Cameron Lau, IB Times TV. Hi and welcome to the Open Minds Update, I'm Maureen Ellsbury. Imagine going out to the Baltic Sea to try and find a sunken ship with a stash of rare champagne and cognac, and instead finding an unidentified sunken object. That is exactly what happened to Swedish researcher and sunken treasure hunter Peter Lindbergh and his crew aboard the Ocean Explorer. While searching for the treasure, an anomalous circular object was found 300 feet deep and was identified by the 60-foot blip on the radar screen. Lindbergh's research team would love to find out exactly what this object is, However, they are on a strict nominal grant to find the historic Champagne and Cognac. Their website, OceanExplorer.se, is accepting donations to get to the bottom of Meanwhile, this Meanwhile, uh, there's been a fresh UFO sighting near the Russian border at uh, the bottom of the Baltic Sea. Sea surveyors say they've found what can only be described as the wreckage of a crashed spaceship. Our correspondent, Daryl Poshkova, knows the truth is out there. And uh, let's see what she can tell us, because she's with me in the studio. Thank you so much for coming over. Tell us, please, what is all the fuss about? Well, hardly anyone knows the truth, but what we do know is that there is a shape on the seabed that it's round and it's unusually round. And the location is between uh, the between Sweden and Finland. Now, uh, there was a team of ocean researchers who found uh, who were searching for a century-old shipwreck, a merchant ship, a Swedish merchant ship that contained several cases of champagne. What they found instead was uh, a mysterious circle about just over 18 meters in diameter, and uh, clearly it was visible on the seabed. Now, the explorers who found it say that um, the earth around the alleged craft was scarred and therefore it suggests that it could have been moving on the seabed. The lead explorer Peter Lindbergh says that he hasn't seen anything in his 18 years career like this and that it could be anything if it's just a shape on the ocean bed then it's 
obviously worthless. If it's a UFO, it's priceless. But it could also be another Stonehenge. Um, but he says he doesn't have the money uh, or the resources to explore any further. And therefore, this is really a case for exploration. Absolutely. I'm sure there'll be someone interested. So they were after some vintage bubbly. And what they get is possibly UFO. But what now we're witnessing is that scientists and bloggers are arguing over the shape of this, this ship. You said it was round, but tell us more. Well, probably it's more the bloggers than the scientists who argue about this. But uh, some enthusiasts have been comparing the shape to the uh, Millennium Falcon, uh, a spacecraft uh, from the Star Wars series. And uh, experts, uh, probably the scientists, have been saying that the shape uh, of the idea of a flying saucer as a round object might actually be wrong. And that often uh, the shape changes according to our perceptions and ideas. And um, throughout the century, it has been changing several times times from round to triangle and many other. Uh, um, an author of the book called UFO Files, da Dr. David Clark, says that um, our changing ideas of alien appearance, origin and motives reflect contemporary preoccupations and obsessions. Now, that's smart, isn't it? Fantastic. Yeah, good quote. Um, also, this, of course, this isn't the first sighting of something, but a, a, a sort of similar story happened a while ago in the Caribbean, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. Uh, stories of UFOs have been appearing many, many times. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the most famous is the so-called Bimini Road, uh, a rock formation in the Caribbean, which uh, some people claim is man-made and those who believe in um, extraterrestrial activity exactly, or there. even terrestrial but man-made uh, origins they say that it could be connected to the lost city of Atlantis now uh, geologists say that it could have been easily um, naturally formed by uh, by our beautiful nature but whatever it is regarding this UFO uh, the reaction uh, on, among the bloggers is that it is most likely something connected to the Second World War or another volcano coming now these these are the um, ideas that uh, the readers are suggesting. It's just too much we don't know, really. But uh, it's interesting to, to sort of explore and dwell. Thank you so much. We're talking to our correspondent, Dari Pushkova. Thanks again for coming over. 全世界有很多科学家做了一个统计最平缓的地方也是在这个地方有三次传染总共两万多人就在波罗迪海这个地方发生就在这个地方发生这么多次传染两万个烟魂就存在这个波罗迪海三次传染而已那是发生在什么在一九四五年Silver color. Thin. Multiple. Heavy. Gold. What do you say? Gold. Okay. So this size of box has points on top. Not dots, but points <laughs> on top with levers to move, to intensify. The energy within the invisible tube. 
Let's sound lucky. You know, like, like, these are like levers here. It's like, um, yeah, you know, like, like some kind of levers or something, you know? They're all kind of here and, but they're really packed in the components. Speak up. I don't know what I want to say here. These are going to be moving like this, maybe. Okay. And this is rigid. And this moves like this. That's why I mean by arcing. Okay. So, I don't know, it's kind of a sweet chemical smell. That's what I'm going to put. Okay, do it. I'm going to move to another part of this thing. I feel like I'm doorknobbing just in this one area, and it, maybe I need to move around a little bit. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw it on a little bit smaller scale so I can see it better. I feel as if beneath this part that I've been examining is something very large. And you see where I have these arrows here that's showing the direction of the... This is very large, moving downward. gray, white gray, it's almost a cement color, reminds me of a dam. It's not a dam, but it reminds me of a dam, if that makes any sense. I, don't know. I mean, just just that it's so big and massive and huge and going down. Whenever you're stood on a dam and you look down and it's like that, and that's the way it is. It's like an AI where I'm standing there and I can see how it just moves down away from me, slanting down. Four below ground, so um, semi. Buried. Um, three, short, above ground. Uh, four, uh, tall, below ground. And I will apologize way ahead of time. My writing goes to pot. It's okay, I got cameras here. That's what they're okay, for. Good. That's why we're recording Say It In Out Loud, because you won't be able to read half this stuff. Um, okay. Um, one, slightly recessed. Um, uh, 
uh, thick. One, uh, gravelly gray uh, goes from above to below ground. Um, AOL. Uh, like a weapons bunker or missile silo tube something like that the the surface thing in the middle is way thicker than it ought to be or way thicker than you would expect uh, note gravelly gray is thicker than you would expect it seems odd though I mean it's just so straight up and down inside Four and a half. Straight up and down inside. It will break. Uh, it will break. Um, the moon tube, the Millennium Falcon, hid inside. Our strikes back. And that. Okay. Put your hand over that. Put it over that drawing right there. And tell me if you feel anything hot. Just like uh, heat. Like um, generating up from it from here. Mm -hmm. um, there's just heat coming up from it, but centralized here, and then, but the thing is that this thing is beneath this mesh, that's how it feels. So there's this heat source, but it's like underneath this meshing, this thing here. So this is below, below this thing, and there's heat coming out of it, and it's less hot over here. All right, can you, uh, on another sheet, turn that on its side and do, instead of a top, come over to the side and look in and describe it from the side as if it was like you're doing a cross -section. Oh, okay, so it, it's like um, like this. So let's say this thing is on its side here, and here's my mesh here. And this heat looks, if it's like it's coming up from here, but it feels like there's a lot of them. You know, this is like, like there's, there's, there's a network of those. And this heat is coming up here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, here, here, here. That's like, like this thing here, 
is like one one of these things, you know. There's there's mm -hmm. just, it's just one of them here. Um, of these things going around, and like these cylinders, like you know, something like that. Okay. Um, you want to continue with the uh, stage four uh, that you were on there? Uh, do we want to put a page? This page number though. So oh, yeah. We're still there. All right. So. Um, to be 17 and 18. Okay. Um, if you could just probe that that top drawing right there with your pen and just kind of yeah and just would you say that that's you know get a sense of some the age of it? I mean just kind of just a first impression, kind of a ballpark, uh, modern time, ancient time. Just a uh, first well, impression. It 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 feels like a UFO. It feels kind of UFO y to me, you know, because I'm getting all these UFO y looking all things. Right, well, right. Uh, do whatever you do all to right. document that. All right. Well, I'm just going to say it feels UFO y <laughs> <laughs> to me. Or alien. All right. You know? Any sense of age? Um, and uh, old. You know, put it down. Old, but new. I get the feeling of both old and new. Old, but the new feels different to me. You know, like um, newly discovered. That's the new. You know, mm -hmm. so it feels like it's newly discovered, but it doesn't feel new, but newly discovered. Mm -hmm. UFO-y. Mm -hmm. I think it might be a new word.
Absolut, fast man har ju hållit förväntningarna undertryckta. Nej, men vad ska man säga? Det är ju först nu det börjar komma fram till ytan, nu när man är på plats. Nu när allt har fallit på plats. Så. Ja, det är ju här ute. Perfekt väl. Det är bra. Ska man titta där? Titta där. Okej, okay, droppa! Nu 
Nej, nej, man ser. Ska vi se. Eller vajer kanske. Det som vajer. Men på den förra, förra scenariobilden, då hade du något till höger som gav ganska tjockt tek och fast. Nu ser man inte så bra här, men... Det man kan se på den mittesta skärmen just nu det är ett antal vajrar som sitter fast i klon som man använder på roboten. Men fan, det är som det. nu kommer ett sådant här mål för dig. Ja, jag tror att man ska vänta ut det här lite grann. Nej, jag tror att det är bara att Frågan är, vad, hur, vad har du för range nu då på närmsta ringen? Närmsta? 1,5. Åh fan, ja, då är det varje där. Där ligger ju något också. Där va? Och, och jag tänkte den här, det här. Det här ytterligt. Ja. Då får du luta det lite. Åt det man. Vilket? Höger. Rolla höger. Jag har ju det här. Det är lite här. Där. Där. Har du lagt in på skolan? Vilken kurs vill du ha? Ja, du lär ju komma upp till... Börja med 100... 90 då. Ja, det är ju inte så mycket. 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 Det är ju inte
Ja, dagens datum då, det är 19 juni, strax efter 07 morgon. Och vi har ju lämnat positionen då, där vi låg och eh, jobbar med raket Jönköping. Nu har vi fått ett helt nytt ställe och titta på andra drag. Och tydligen, för inte allt så länge sedan, så så vi något på burkarna här. Så vad är det vi har sett? Ja, vi tror att vi har hittat Tyros som vi letar efter och Kjell som sänktes vid samma tillfälle och inom höravstånd från varandra. Nu ligger de här 900 meter mellan, men det kanske var höravstånd. Men inte. Så nu håller vi på att styra in för att åka förbi igen och få en bättre bild på om det är bra eller inte. Jag tror ni jag ska ha. Törs för det. Törs för det. Ja, för att gå vi nära så. Vi kan väl vänta och gå och se hur vi lägger oss i position. analoga system. Vi tar en eh, kvart eller någonting när vi är där. Först ser vi att vi ska kunna positionera oss på platsen här. Det är lite osäkert med tanke på vägar, veder, vågor och allting. Och så. Men vi hoppas kunna gå ner i alla fall och titta till var det är. Vad det är, det har vi ingen aning om. Jag tror inte det är något. Men är kursen bra? Ja, det är så länge. Ja.
It's puzzling. I don't think I've ever seen anything quite like this before.